Having won their ninth consecutive title in May 2021, finishing 13 points ahead of RB Leipzig, a period that has also seen them pick up five DFB Pokals, Bayern Munich are quite clearly the dominant force in the Bundesliga. And having thrashed Bayer Leverkusen 5-1 earlier this month, they are overwhelming favourites to win a 10th consecutive title, a record in Europe's top five leagues. Incredibly well run with a ruthless transfer policy, excellent coaching and a plethora of stars at the top of their game, it's difficult to imagine Die Rotten losing their grip on German football anytime soon. But how did this super club grow to the behemoth it is today? What are the secrets to its success? And what can other clubs learn from this remarkable period of superiority? Welcome back to EFD Explained, this is how Bayern Munich became so dominant. Before we get into the history and methods of Germany's most successful team, it's worth explaining the numbers. Bayern's aforementioned title win in May 2021 by 13 points, the largest winning margin in Europe's top five leagues wasn't particularly noticeable. After all, we've become used to them walking the league. In their current winning streak, they've finished an average of 14 points ahead of second place, with 2018-19 the only time the margin was anything less than 10 points, and 12-13 and 17-18 seeing the gap widen to over 20. Since 2012-13, they have only lost more than four league games in a single season once, with 2014-15 their second under Pep Guardiola, their worst in terms of defeats with five. For context, Dortmund, their closest rivals, have only lost fewer than five league games twice in that run, and finished both of those seasons 10 and two points behind Bayern respectively. Their dominance in the Pokal might not be quite so breathtaking with five wins in the last decade, but there is still two more than next best Dortmund in that time, and their 20 cup titles is 14 more than next best Wolfsburg. As if sweeping all before them on the domestic front wasn't enough, they have also won two European Cups in nine attempts, joining Barcelona as the only European club to complete a treble twice. Finalists on four occasions since 2010 and having reached the semi-finals in eight of the last 12 seasons, dwarfing Barcelona's five and only topped by Real Madrid's nine in the same period, Bayern have translated their domestic dominance onto the continental stage. As well as their six European Cups, five more than any other German club, and a figure topped only by Real Madrid and Milan, Bayern have won a remarkable 51 German titles and DFB Pokals. To put that in context, that is four more than the nation's next most successful clubs, FC Nuremberg, Dortmund, Schalke and Hamburg put together. But how did Bayern become this winning machine? It wasn't always this easy for Bayern. 59 years ago, they weren't even invited to be part of the newly formed Bundesliga, with the DFB only wanting a single representative from each city. So champions of the Oberliga South, 1860 Munich, got the nod. Bayern were furious. After all, they'd finished ahead of new Bundesliga clubs Frankfurt, Stuttgart and Karlsruhe in their division, but the DFB's ruling turned out to be a blessing. With their finances in a shoddy state, Bayern decided to shed their expensive stars and change their footballing policy instead prioritising the development of young talent from the local region. That included the remarkable trio of Gerd Müller, Sepp Meyer, and Franz Beckenbauer, who would help Bayern to promotion to the Bundesliga in 1966, win the title three years later, and then go on to dominate German and European football in the 1970s. Beckenbauer's story is particularly notable. Part of the SC 1906 Munich youth setup as an aspiring centre forward, the club then got into financial trouble and decided to jettison their academy. So Beckenbauer and his teammates decided to join 1860 Munich, the club they had always supported. However, shortly before joining, he took part in an under-14 tournament and came to blows with an 1860 Munich centre-back, leading to him changing his mind and joining Bayern instead. Converted into an elegant ball-playing centre-back who was to become the team's leader, Beckenbauer was central to Bayern winning three consecutive titles between 1972 and 1974, three European Cups from 1974 to 1976, as well as Die Mannschaft winning the 1972 Euros and 1974 World Cup, picking up the 1972 Ballon d'Or for good measure. After a challenging start, Bayern had not only established themselves as Germany's largest club and a massive European force, but their blueprint of bringing through promising homegrown players. But how did they capitalise on it? Whilst Beckenbauer and his team might have laid the foundations for Bayern's success on the pitch, it was former teammate Uli Hohner, seven years his junior, who led the revolution off it. Forced to retire at just 27 due to a serious knee injury sustained in the 1975 European Cup final, Honus decided to stay on at the club and became the youngest ever general manager in the division's history. Taking over in 1979, the club were reportedly in debt of 3.5 million euros, with an annual turnover of just 6 million euros. With a keen business mind and somewhat of a pioneer in terms of marketing, promotional activities and merchandise, by the time Honus left his position to become club president in 2009, Bayern were one of the world's richest clubs with a turnover in excess of 300 million euros. 
According to the Deloitte Money League's rankings for the 2019-20 campaign, Bayern were the third richest club behind Real Madrid and Barcelona in terms of revenue, bringing in 659 million euros, 59 million euros more than England's richest representative, Man United. Of course, whilst Bayern's continued success on the pitch helped create the commercial powerhouse it is today, with trophies breeding interest and fans globally, the ownership structure in German football also helped. As we have explained on previous videos, 50 plus 1 dictates that the club must be majority owned and controlled by its members, rather than by a single person or group. Whilst there are notable exceptions, including RB Leipzig, Bayer Leverkusen and Wolfsburg amongst others, Bayern are majority fan owned. Now, as of June 2021, Bayern have 293,000 members, over 132,000 more than the next best Schalke, who are currently in the second tier, and almost double the number of Germany's third best supported club, Borussia Dortmund. Not only is it the most in the Bundesliga, but it is 43,000 more than Benfica, and 131,000 more than Barcelona, who rank second and third in Europe. According to 442, membership costs range from 20 euros to a standard rate of 60. But let's assume the average is around 30 euros. Bayern would therefore make 9 million euros a year in membership fees alone. This allows Bayern to continue to keep their ticket prices low, with season tickets at their 75,000 self-owned Allianz Arena available for as little as 123 euros. With Honus quoted as saying, We do not like to think of our fans like cows who you milk. Football has got to be for everybody. And Bayern certainly have a long history of helping out other German clubs in financial need lending a hand to 1860, St. Pauli, Hansa Rostock and even rivals Dortmund over the years. Although it should be noted that Honus's personal financial management is questionable to say the least, having admitted to evading 28.5 million euros of tax in 2014, a crime for which he spent almost two years in prison for between March 2014 and February 2016. Crucially, Bayern makes sure their board not only represents the business side, but also the sporting side, with footballing brains like Khan, Salihamidzic and in the past Honus, Rummenegger and Beckenbauer having a say in all matters. This ensures that people with a deeply ingrained love of the club, who crucially know what made it successful in the past, work to continue that in the future. Of course, as seen in the case of Schalke, revenue and an enormous stadium is nothing without the correct players and the men chosen to lead them. Bayern's ability to identify and recruit the best managerial talent is second to none. Since Otmar Hitzfeld stepped down after his second spell in 2008, their appointments have rarely missed. Four of their eight permanent managers, Van Haar, Heinkers, Guardiola and Ancelotti, had won seven Champions Leagues between them. Heinkers won another whilst in charge, Flick triumphed in 2020, and Julian Nagelsmann was the most sought-after emerging coach in Europe. But of course, great managers aren't anything without great players, and Bayern have acquired plenty. But what is interesting is that over the last five completed seasons, stretching from 1617 to 2021, Bayern's net spent is only 164 million euros, which, whilst larger than Wolfsburg's 131 million euros and Dortmund's ridiculous profit of 212 million euros in the same period, it's actually smaller than the Bundesliga's other Champions League representative, RB Leipzig's 170 million euros. And when you compare it to the other members of the Deloitte Money League top five for 2021, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man United, and Liverpool, it pales in comparison. United have a net spend of an extortionate 599 million euros in that period, Barcelona 370, Liverpool 166, and Real Madrid just 46 million euros. For Bayern to sustain their excellence domestically and across the continent while spending fairly frugally is a credit to their recruitment. How do they do it? Well, as we've already established, Bayern are by far the most successful club in Germany, meaning that most young German footballers dream of representing the club, winning trophies and competing in the latter stages of the Champions League. This has come incredibly handy with players like Nabry and Kimmich persuaded to join for fees of less than 9 million euros, RB Leipzig's captain Marcel Sabitzer costing just 16 million euros, and Goretzka and Nubel continuing Bayern's long history of signing players on freeze, which includes Lewandowski and Götze. This enormous pull in Germany and smart recruitment means that Bayern have only spent more than 40 million pounds, the equivalent of 47 million euros, on two players in their entire history. Luca Hernandez and Leroy Sane, who have both recovered from challenging starts to become key figures under Nagelsmann. Compare that to Real Madrid, who have done so 13 times, Man United 12, Barcelona 8 and Liverpool 6, and it's clear that De Rotten are getting more right than most. Their 11 most used players in the Bundesliga this season in terms of minutes played cost the club 238 million euros. For context Chelsea's, many people's third favourites for the Premier League title, cost 384 million, a figure not uncommon in the upper echelons of European football. 
So there we have it, Bayern are dominant because they were smarter off the pitch sooner than everyone else, have cleverly invested in their stadium and marketing, and crucially hired the right coaches and got their recruitment right more often than not. A footballing juggernaut that shows no sign of slowing down, Bayern are an example to everyone in European football. So guys, that was our explained on what makes Bayern Munich so dominant. Let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments down below and what you'd like to see us cover next on Future Explained. Get your thoughts in the comments down below, as I said. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Euro Football Daily as we race towards 450,000 subscribers. And I'll catch you next time.